Okay, my name is Stefano. I am from SwiMed, which is the company that uh, produces and markets this clinic case that we are going to be demonstrating today. Um, the case is already open here, but it's very easy to open with this. Uh, um, with, with, um, it's very easy to open and, and operate. When you open the case, then you just need to make sure that you can position it, it in the way that is more comfortable for you in terms of the tilting you can release this button and then move it up or move it down and it will automatically um, you know, lock it in position. The first thing to do when you open the case is to turn on power. So there is a, a little power switch here and then there is a second power switch on top of the tablet that is here. Um, once the tablet is on, it takes five minutes before it connects and everything is ready to go. So you should be doing as a first thing, you should be actually turning it on and making sure that it starts connecting. Once it's turned on, you need to connect the various peripherals. Um, these peripherals, they need to be connected to a hub. The hub has ports that are numbered one, two, seven. We're gonna be using only the first three ports. So number one, each one of these devices has a number on the side. So this is number one, number two, and number three. Uh, the first one is an XM camera, which is this XM camera. It has a light on, um, and it does autofocus. Um, well, we'll be talking about it during the call that we'll be doing in a moment, so I can show you what are the features, etc., of this camera. The second camera is a webcam. This is the webcam. This webcam has a little tripod, and the webcam has a hole at the bottom, and just you need to put the tripod in and secure it until it doesn't move anymore. And then you can adjust the legs and the top. So what you can do, you can adjust the legs and then you can decide what is the position that you want on the top and then lock it like this. So this is gonna be, we call it the patient camera. So if you have a patient, you can point it to the patient. So if the patient is on the other side, just put it on the, on the desk or close to the patient and then it stays in position. And then you can, you can check and point it to, to the patient. Um, so these are all the things that, that we have. We also have a microphone. The microphone has a button at the center where you can mute it, but you can also mute it from the interface that I will be showing in a moment. The microphone, so that's all. Usually what we recommend is not to put the microphone inside the case. And the reason is that otherwise sound will just, um, will just bounce on the corners and on the sides but to put it outside the case where, again, it's comfortable for you, not too far away from the person speaking. So I'm going to be placing it right here. Um, so that's the, that's a ba these are the basics. Um, the, the, the solution has two buttons that are on the, on the desktop. You will see these are the only two buttons on the desktop. Uh, the first one that you need to use is uh, for the stethoscope. So the first step is to take the Littmann stethoscope that we have here, the stethoscope is turned off, you need to turn the stethoscope on, so now it's turned on, and then you start this application, you will see that the stethoscope is listed already in the list of devices, it's the only device that is available, you just need to click on the name of the device, and then go here and click on the connect button. It will have a message that says, you know, there should be an icon blinking, and then when it connects, like it is done right now, you will see a little red box at the bottom here that says it's connected correctly. This red box will turn green when you transmit, but it's enough that it's red at this point before you start the call. At this point, you just minimize this, and you will not need to use it anymore. So the next step is to go on the SwiMed icon, double click on it, and you will be connected. And so it will connect to the, to the server and be ready to call. So it connects and then it will show the name mobile case as your name. When you're ready to make the call, you just need to press on the call button and you will see the list of people that are available. Right now I'm operating on a keyboard here where there is a little mouse, a trackpad that I can use. You could also operate on the, on the, on the tablet itself. And we have tested it and even if you put gloves on, it still works. So you can even operate with gloves on. Um, so I'm selecting the name of my, co the, my colleague that is connected right now, and then I need to go on the call button, push call, and then the call starts. 
you will see the two videos of the same size so you can see what the doctor can see and that's deliberate but you can change that and I will show you in a second and then you see a series of buttons on top that are the buttons that are that you will need to use to operate the the system so you will see the local video first and then you will see the remote video after hi Jeff Good morning. I'm gonna be sitting down so I'm not cut off at least and I can as you can see I you know it's too high I can regulated and now it's pointing at me uh, correctly. So right now we are connected with, uh, with Jeff. Jeff is now going to be the physician to whom we are going to be connecting right now. So Jeff can, the first thing that Jeff can do, he can of course talk to us and give instructions. He can change the camera. So right now Jeff can use the, uh, for example, switch to the patient camera and he has control on his side so there is nothing that you need to do. So he's changing, I'm taking the exam camera in my hand so I can then point it, for example, to my hand. And one thing that I was saying is the camera is an autofocus that works well when you're not too close. So you should be a little bit removed from the, uh, from the area that you're pointing at. If you get too close, it can work, it try to get focus, but if you don't have focus, you just move a little bit away and then it will automatically autofocus again. So that's the first thing. Um, the, the physician is also able to see us so to see the patient, because this is supposed to be pointed to the patient at the same time, so they can see where is it pointed right now. So if I point this camera to me, and assuming that I'm the patient, right now you can see that I'm pointing the camera to my left hand, okay? And it can instruct me to say, now point it to the right hand or point it to the leg or whatever you're examining at the point in time. Okay, can you go back to the webcam? So you can go back and then, it, Right now it's a bit strange because I'm giving instructions to him, usually it will be the other way around. So you will be receiving instruction from the physician. So the other thing that he can do is he can listen to the stethoscope. So you will not be hearing the sound because you, I'm hearing the sound inside here. But the moment I put it on, he can then, and Jeff can just confirm whether he can hear. So he's repeating it for a minute. So he's able to listen. So you can stop, you can stop listening. D during the time when you're using the stethoscope, your microphone vis-a-vis -vis the doctor is not, the physician is not open. So he will be able to talk to you and say, move it left, move it right. Whatever you say, you really, you know, you can either talk into the stethoscope, which is going to be a little bit muffled, or you can just, you know, um, ask, you know, the, the physician can always stop listening. It goes back to the microphone. Are we back to the microphone, Jeff? Can you hear me fine? Yes. Okay, so we are back to it. So this is basically what, what happens during a normal visit. So you will have, the doctor will give instructions. He will be selecting the video cameras that he wants to point at. He will tell you when is the time to connect the stethoscope. He will be able to listen and give you instructions. Once the call is ongoing, for example, one request you could have is to put the video of the doctor larger so that the patient can see the doctor right now at the same size. So what you need to do, there is a button that says manage call, call layouts here, and you can go and select auto placement, which is going to put the image of the doctor large on the screen. Um, because the, the, the video covers also the toolbar, what you need to do is when you go back, you need to click using the right button on the mouse to get a toolbar to show again. At that point, the toolbar is available again. It will be the same situation. You can go back to same size videos and then that's all you need to do. The other thing that you might be needing to do is you might need to pause the video for privacy for whatever reason. So if you push this button, that stops the video. It says video has been paused. The moment that you click on resume video, the video resumes and the other party can see you again. The other thing that you can do and the other two buttons that I will mention here that are useful, you can mute your microphone so for any reason, there is noise in there, etc. You can mute it and as you can see in the, in the, you know, when I push that button, it also mutes here, becomes red. And then when I unmute it, it's normal, the red goes away. So you know that if it has been muted, you can observe here, but you can also observe on the microphone here. You can do the same with the speaker. So there is noise at the physician side, you can then um, push, push uh, click on uh, mute speakers and that will mute the speakers. So this is all in terms of the, of the visits. When the visit has been completed, 
you can just click on hang up, which is the last button here, and the, and the call will stop. So I'm going to press hang up. You will get a little uh, pop-up that is going to ask you whether you're sure that you want to hang up the call. This is done to avoid for you accidentally clicking on that button. So you will confirm, and at this point, the call is finished. So this is the entire process, and I would say that's all. Okay, then when this is done, and then you want to shut down, what you need to do is you need to switch off the Litman. The Litman has batteries, and you can see the battery levels on the Litman. So if there is any need, one needs to monitor the batteries and eventually replace the battery inside the Litman when it's, when it's used. Um, what you need to do at this point, you just go where it says more, and it says quit SWIMED. It's going to ask you whether you want to do it, and you quit. Then the next thing you do, you go into the Windows icon here, power, shut down, and this will shut down. So you wait until it has shut down. Then at this point, you go back to the button here, and you press it, and you turn the power off. To check whether the power is on or off, there is this vent here, so the fan here. So if you, there, is no, um, you know, there is no noise here coming out of that, or no air coming out of it, it means that it's turned off, and you can hear it because the sound is. And the last thing you need to do is you need to unplug the various peripherals. At this point, after you've unplugged all the peripherals, you move them out of the way, you, I'm gonna take this off, is that, yeah. And then what you need to do, this was con just for presentation purposes, so it's not gonna be connected uh, when you use it. So then you close the case, and this is the way you close the case. You need to make sure when you close it that you don't get any resistance. So it should close smoothly. And then you just lock it. To unlock it, when you, when you open it, there are these little buttons here. So you just push them down and then push this out and out this way. And the same on this side, in, out, and then you're able to open it. The only other thing is the... Um, it, this is, this uh, keyboard is attached, but just to show it has a button here, this should be turned on red because it also goes on battery, otherwise it's not going to work. So that's the last thing that you need to do.